Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Cross's Corner. I am absolutely delighted that the world's best female row, Simona Radis, could join us from Romania. Hi, Simona. Hello. Nice it's, to meet you. Thank you, Simona. It's fantastic that you're here. I've seen so many of your races, and uh, you have an incredible career. But right now, you have just finished a break a holiday from the world championships yes i finished uh, the holidays on monday i'm uh, I, st I started the trainings from uh, this monday and uh, in the next days we will uh, start to train in the single schools and uh, we will prepare the next competitions Oh, that's really interesting and i know we were talking before and you said you had been training on the ergometers yeah for the moment we train on the ergometers and uh, in the next days we will change so um how much work do you do on the ergometers how much do you use the ergometers in training maybe one two three times a week or maybe not as much as that depends on the weather if it's too cold uh, we stay on the ergometer, but if the weather is good and help us, we always uh, choose the water because uh, uh, the trainings on the water are the most important ones. So uh, we try not to make ergometer so much. Okay, yeah. I got that impression when I was talking with Antonio. And Yes, yes. And that's why we will go to Italy at the end of November to train there because uh, in Romania it will be too cold and uh, in Italy the weather is, is much better. Oh, fantastic. So um, when was the last time you did a 2K test on the ergometer? I don't remember exactly, but uh, what I know is that uh, it was a personal best in that uh, <laughs> test. So. Um, do, do you remember the score? Oh, yes, of course. It was a uh, 6.35. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so um, you will be in a single. So will you train in a single in Romania as well as in Italy? Will you stay in the single till Christmas time? What, what's, what, what are the plans? I think we will stay in the singles... Uh, uh, until the end of January, I think, because uh, it helps us to work on our technique a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. after that, we will have time for the double and for the eight, or, or I don't know, oh, maybe that... some surprises. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> I'm very interested in talking to you about that possibility. But uh, tell me about um, your speed in a single. How does that how fast are you compared to the other women in your training group? Uh, it's a little bit difficult to explain because, you know, when uh, we talk about uh, uh, race speed, I'm the faster. Uh, if we talk only about the Air 4, uh, only um, the regular training uh, in a normal day, I might, I'm not the first. But I think it's important to be faster uh, in the race speed. So, <laughs> yeah, I I get that. Um, and um, you've just the world championships. Maybe what was it? Three, four weeks ago. Um, how pleased were you with the, your series of races during that world championships? Every race was uh, uh, good. Um, all of them. And uh, I'm uh, really grateful for the result because this year was so so difficult for us. We had a lot of injuries and uh, um, we didn't train all the time in the double because of these uh, uh, injuries. And, uh, you know, at this um, moment and uh, at this kind of championship, we need to be in our best shape and mm -hmm. we wasn't. So, we just give it our best, but uh, yeah, I was uh, nervous before the the championship because I was thinking uh, 
that we are not gonna make this one so yes but yeah everything was really good and uh, for sure the next year uh, will be much much better so i'm happy um that uh, so you had uh, a very difficult race i remember perhaps maybe one of your most difficult races in the european championships this year against lithuania oh yes yes that was the most difficult one um we we didn't pre uh, prepared that championship uh with one week before that uh, europeans Ankutsa just went home because she lost uh, a member of her family. Oh no. She didn't train, yeah. That's why um I was uh, Antonio put me in the single to be sure that we have an alternative to change if Ankutsa will be will not be okay to race. Mm -hmm. But uh she was fine and um we made the competition in the double and uh, that final was <laughs> so tough. Uh, we give it everything, everything, and I was in the um, life in the last two hundred, and I was thinking that not today, not today. This is not the day when we are gonna lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It 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 was a fantastic race, and um, it wasn't the only race that you won in that championships. Yes, after the double, I we. Uh, Raced in the eight too, and uh, we won the we won the eight too. So, <laughs> two goals. <laughs> two goals. Um, I I I found that really uh, incredible. You won the eight by quite a distance, I think, from the next crew. Maybe it was the British women. I can't remember, but um, yeah, the British was on the second place. Yeah, um, and um, you you like racing more than once in more than one event i think i like a lot <laughs> i think it's funny and um, i like this kind of competition i want to test my limits and this mm. is how i can make it mm. so what do you remember about the championships in uh Rechiche when uh antonio asked you you had just won the women's doubles again and he asked you to sit in the stroke seat of the Romanian eight. In that moment, I was thinking that uh, if someone can make it, I'm the one. So ah. <laughs> I, I took it like a challenge for myself. I was thinking that I have nothing to lose. So, um, yeah, I uh, I was happy and uh, I tried I I tried to do my best because after a race in the double, it wasn't so easy. But uh, with a, such a strong team behind me, there was no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how often do you do rowing in your your training, or is it something you're just automatically good at? <laughs> I think I'm talented. I have a lot of talent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I'm training every day. And there is a lot of workouts and difficult moments. But, you know, if you uh, push yourselves, yourself and uh, just keep working, uh, you become better and better. And this is in my case. So I try to motivate myself and go um, one more step every day closer mm -hmm. to the big dream, big dream. <laughs> okay well let's let's go back a little bit to when you started rowing um how did you be become to be a, a rower what what happened how were you chosen what what was the it's the a funny story because uh, i did not choose uh, rowing rowing chose me so oh. I was uh, at my school uh, and in that day a coach of rowing came and was searching for uh, uh, children to um, practice this kind of sport and uh, I was the tallest from the school. He saw me and uh, he talked to me about rowing. I uh, didn't know much about this sport. Mm -hmm. it, it was something new for me but uh, he showed me some um, videos and photos and after uh, I talked to him, I went home and tell my family that I want to try rowing. 
<laughs> and uh, my mom was uh, was funny. She was like, "Hey, this is not possible. It's too hard for you, and you <laughs> and you really don't like sport." And that was true. I I didn't like sport before, <laughs> and I was like, "No, no, I I want to try because this is what I feel inside inside myself. I need to go and see what's all about." And uh, this is how I start throwing. <laughs> Wow. Um, and how old were you then? 14 years old. Oh, okay. And um, how long before you realized that this was a sport that you could be good at? After the first year, I think, because um, my evolution was uh, uh, constant and uh, I started to beat the um uh, older athletes mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, that was the moment i realized that i could be a champion one day so i need to keep working and uh, improve and did you have to move away from your home and live somewhere else or were you able to stay at home no i um stayed uh, 600 uh, kilometers away of my home no. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> From when you were 14? Yes. <laughs> you're, you're kidding. No, no. This is who, look, who looked after you? <laughs> me. And I don't know. <laughs> Only me. I, I like to explore, to meet other people, to mm -hmm. see other places. And for me, it was uh, easily to go from my home. It was harder for my family because <laughs> they were crying after me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. I like it, the idea of going in a new place and meet, that, meet other, other people. Yes. And so um, the first time you went to the junior championships, I think you were in a quadruple skull. And how old were you, 16 or 15? Uh, 16, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was. I know you. You you finished in the B final. Oh um, yeah, I remember. Uh, we we. I think we won the B final. I don't yeah. remember exactly, but uh, was heartbreaking for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you think you would go and win a medal or something like that? Oh, yeah. I, I was thinking maybe not to a medal, but I was thinking to a final E, not a final B. But, you know, this is the competition and <laughs> we yeah. need to accept. And um, you had Ancuta in the boat with you, I think, that time. Yes, Ancuta was in the four with me. And so did you know, did you have any idea that the two of you would be such a good combination in the future? Really? To, to say the truth, no. I, I was not thinking in that moment. <laughs> Actually, in 2016, uh, a coach uh, put us in the double and mm -hmm. uh, we rode it at uh, the European Championship in that year. We took it only the fourth place, and uh, after that, me and Akutsa, uh, uh, we think that we are not made to compete together in this kind of boat, and uh, we wanted to change. And after that, she went to the eighth, and I went to the pair for uh, the world. Yeah, yeah, it was a short period and the wrong mindset because after. Three years, uh, Antonio, Antonio came, put us back in the double, and uh, the result was incredible. Yes. So um, you had, uh, so your last year in the juniors, was that in the, that was in the quadruple scale again, wasn't it? Yeah, again in the quadruple. And I'm trying to remember where you finished. Um I uh, won the Europeans and the Worlds too. Yeah. That was a really good year for me. <laughs> yeah. So how how did that feel your first time to win the Worlds? It was incredible. 
it was my last chance to win a, a world championship like a junior. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was uh, the most important result I had in that moment. And um, I was grateful and uh, I was dreaming big about the future. And after Ooh. that championship, I uh, went to um, under uh, 23 Europeans mm -hmm. in the eighth and uh, we took the silver. So it was another great result for me in that year. Mm -hmm. So when you say you were dreaming big, were you thinking back then of Tokyo? Not really at Tokyo, but I was thinking about the um, uh, the um, senior period. I was thinking that I'll uh, change the place. I'll go to the uh, big girls, and uh, I wanted to be in the fastest boats. So uh, I knew I can make it in that moment. Yeah, yeah. So. Um... Your senior B year was uh, 2018. Uh, is is that right? You're yeah. under 23, yeah? Yeah. Um, and uh, you won. Um, did you win in that year? I, I'm trying to remember if you won gold or silver. I took the gold on the quad again, the yes. Europeans and the Worlds. And I also competed at the seniors, but... Uh, at the Europeans, I took uh, five, the five place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, you you had a, a feel for your first senior world championships in in Plovdiv. Yeah. Um, uh, it was interesting, a hard one. I remember it, but it was really interesting, and I learned it a lot from uh, from it. Yeah, yeah, and and so. Um, can you give us an idea of maybe some of the things you learned from that experience? Um, in that moment, I wasn't think that uh, I could uh, make some good races like that. Uh, I didn't have so much trust, so much uh, trust in myself. And um, after I made that races in that competition, I realized that I am really powerful and uh, I need to have more trust in my uh, uh, powers. And uh, I learned how to compete, how to really compete, because it's so, so different from the junior to under 23 and mm. to the seniors. Everything is different. And um, my mindset was changed. So, And who is... Are you changing this yourself or is someone like Antonio helping you or maybe you're uh, someone like uh, Ancuta or other other rowers in the team? How is that happening? You're changing mindset. <laughs> Actually, I, uh, I work with myself uh, and um, uh, in every training, I'm thinking that um, now is the time to work uh, under the pressure of a competition even if i'm only at the training at home or uh, because it's important to to stay in that um, in that feeling of co of the competition and this is how i work to have a strong mind and uh, that's helping me in the real competition yeah 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 i can see it's, that it's like preparing every day uh, the final race every day <sighs> I'm thinking that uh, I'm at the competition. I have uh, uh, Holland and uh, USA near me, and I need to be faster that, uh, than, than them. And is that something you taught yourself to do, or did that come naturally to you? It came naturally, yeah. <laughs> so... So that year, after that year, um, Antonio Colomonici put you and Ancuta in the double. Why did he do that? Uh, we had the selection uh, in the single schools and uh, I won that selection and Ancuta came the second. So uh, that, uh, in that moment, uh, he t told us about... Uh, the double and uh, 
we tried to make it work. So, um, how did it feel? Did did as soon as you came in this double this time, did it feel fantastic? Did it feel natural, or was it quite hard work to make it fast? It wasn't hard because uh, the next day after he put us in the double, we had a um, race together to see if uh, we can make a good time. Mm. And uh, the time was uh, really, really good. And uh, it wasn't hard for us. <laughs> and uh, in that moment, uh, we knew that uh, we are going to compete in this uh, boat together uh, uh, at least one year. Yeah, I I guess it's fantastic in Romania because you have so many strong women rowing that you have got a great idea of the comparative times and the speed with women who have won medals at the World Championships before. Yes, we have a lot of strong women, but, you know, in this moment, we are not so many athletes. Uh, actually... If I uh, got an injury, for example, there's no one who can take my place, you know. And this is a sad thing. But um, we are um, not so many, but we are good and strong. And well, <laughs> why, uh, why are there not so many? Is that because there isn't enough money? Or what, what is the reason that the squad is not bigger, the Romanian women's squad is not bigger? I think it's hard to, um, um, you know, because in these times the children don't want to make sport. They want to play, to spend their time, I don't know, doing other things. And uh, it's uh, there are less uh, children who came and tried to make rowing. I think that's why. And... Um, some of the juniors don't resist until the seniors. So uh, that's why. Mm. That's very interesting. I, I wonder um, I wonder how common that is in other countries as well. It's it's hard to get young young boys and girls to carry on through or to take the sport up in the first place. I don't know how it's in other countries, but uh, in Romania, this is the problem. Mm. And maybe with uh, mind, uh, with the change of mind, uh, this uh, could be changed. But this needs to needs to start from their parents, mm. uh, because uh, all the kids stay all the day with the phones in their hands. <laughs> and uh, that's sad because they need to go out and play with the ball and make yeah. some sport or other activities. I, I'm interested because um, it's important um, for young people to have role models. And I was going to ask you how much you are a role model for any young people or any people around you in, in the rowing team. Um, and I wondered how famous you were in Romania because you have won Olympic gold medals and world championships. So do people recognize you? Yes and no, because in Romania, rowing is not so popular. Really? Yeah, really. Uh, only the real supporters of the sport knows me. Um, and... Um, you asked me about if I'm an example uh, for the younger generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really think I am. And I try to be an example. This is uh, a goal for me. I um, I want to carry them after me. I, I'm always trying to um, uh, speak with them. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm telling them that I'm waiting for them to come and compete in the <laughs> same boat with me. So... <laughs> Why not one day, maybe? Yeah, yeah, why not? Um, and you weren't, uh, when you started, you said you weren't interested really in sport before you started rowing. Um, how long was it before you had a role model or some role models to look at and, and to influence you? Mm, maybe two years. Yeah. Something like that. 
And who were those role models? First uh, model was uh, um, my coach uh, in that period, Veronica Kokelea. And after her, I uh, uh, changed, changed uh. her with Elisabetta Lipa, which is the oh, greater wow. in these days in Romania. And uh, after, when I was uh, a little bit bigger, um, I changed it with uh, Emma Twig. Oh really? Why? Yeah. Why yeah. Emma Twig? Really? Because uh, she's so powerful. She and uh, she's a great athlete, and uh, she was inspiring me. So I wanted to be like uh, her. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and I guess had, you must have spoken to her before because you've been in so many competitions. Mm, not really. I I I met her. Uh, we didn't spoke, I think, so much. Maybe just some hi hi or something. But yeah, yeah. But in my heart, she was uh, my idol. <laughs> okay, I I understand. So uh, you were put in the double with uh, Ancuta by An Antonio. Um, how important has Antonio been to your career as a rower? I think uh, he's really important because uh, he came and changed the mentality. Um, he made another plan of trainings and uh, it was a good one for us because uh, like you see, we are uh, uh, in a good shape on uh, each competition we go and race. And um, he is always present, even if he's not here in the training camp uh, camp with us all the time. Maybe he's in Italy sometimes, but uh, if we have some problems, we just uh, uh, take the phone and write to him, on, or we can call it. And uh, I, I really think the most important uh, thing was this change of the mentality, because uh, before him, we made sport only for, I don't know, because... It was uh, interesting. We like it, but not so much. It was strange. Mm. And I'm not speaking only about me in this moment. Uh, I speak about everybody. And after he came, he made us to do rowing because we enjoy the competition, because we like and uh, we love what we do. And we he tried to tell us not to do sport for money, just because we like uh, to do it, just because uh, we would like to, to be the best and uh, <laughs> the sensation sensation of uh, winning. Oh wow, that's really really interesting. Um, I think there is so much. There is there are many more people saying now that sport must be enjoyed. That long term the long term goal is to enjoy and to have good experiences in your life and this is more important than just the result or just the win exactly yeah so um can you describe your doubles partner what her personality is like and how your personalities fit together we are so different one ah. for each other and that's why we complete uh, uh, one another so well I'm more energetic I got nervous uh, really quick um, but she's so calm and uh, try to equilibrate the situation <laughs> yeah and uh, we stay in the same room uh, since 2018 and we know each other so well and uh, we are like two sisters. <laughs> wow. And she's funny. She's funny and um, <laughs> has a good soul. And this is the most important, the big soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, how did it feel when you won that silver medal, your first senior medal in a world championships back in Linz in 2019? How, how was that for you? It was irreal for me <laughs> because we went to, to that championship uh, with um, the idea of, of the qualification, not Cation, the idea yeah. of a medal. And yeah, 
and uh, after we um, won the um, semifinals and uh, after we took it that uh, qualification, uh, we started to think that maybe we should uh, think about a medal now. Why not? And uh, yeah. uh, that final race was uh, a race for us. This is how uh, we speak about that race. Uh, you know, we give it our best. Uh, we didn't expect anything. We just wanted to finish uh, that race. And uh, even the result uh, wasn't uh, in the first three places. Uh, uh, yeah. We wanted to be a good one. So uh, a second place was uh, yeah for us. Mm. That So... Um... You obviously know how to move a double skull, but it's a very uh, special boat to understand. Not not everybody can row. It, even sometimes fast scullers cannot make a double skull move. What is it about what you and Ankucha do that makes the double skull move quickly? Like, what do you technically focus on? What is what are what are the things to make this boat move so well? It looks easy, but it, it is not. <laughs> we try to, um, we, we don't have the most beautiful technique, uh, but uh, we try to put uh, power together and uh, we are looking for efficiency uh, because uh, not all the times matter how it looks from outside. It matters how it feels on the in inside. And... Uh, uh. And we are searching for this efficiency. And uh, in these uh, years, we improve it a lot. And uh, um, the power we put on uh, every stroke, uh, um, we are uh, more and more efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the telemetry that gives you the power curves? Yes, we have. We have. We are not using it all the time because yeah. sometimes uh, it can uh, disturb us from the training because we see them and um, we want to change things and uh, it's important uh, the period of the trainings because if uh, we are uh, too tired we can make uh, the move right it's a normal thing but if uh, we are uh, in a good shape in that moment uh, we can take a look on uh, uh, that sensors and uh, see mm. what's going on yeah you said technically you weren't necessarily the, the, the best double I, I just wondered when you look at other doubles racing or rowing who do you think does the technique fantastically well who's really good it's it's uh, difficult to say because uh, every every team has uh, some uh, different styles um, and uh, um, I'm not in the um, I don't have the power to say who make it yeah. right but um, I try not to. Um, think at the perfect move because I don't think uh, this move exists because uh, we are so different like people and uh, mm. everyone uh, needs to make something personal and uh, I don't think about perfection. Yeah. So what is the best part of your stroke? Is it the catch, the middle, the finish, the recovery? What do you think is the, the best thing that you do? Uh, I think the catch, yeah, the catch, Why? and uh, Why? I give a good read on uh, on each boat. Why? I don't know. I feel the boat since the beginning. I uh, I feel the boat really well, and I don't catch when I want. I catch when the boat tells me to catch. Uh, okay. It's a yeah. sensation. It's a feeling, and uh, for me, it's easy. And uh, the boat responds very well. That's really interesting. And what about the part of your stroke that you would like to work on more, that you'd like to be better on? 
Mm. I don't really know. Maybe maybe the finish of the move because uh, I uh, I steal a little bit at the end. Yeah. Not because I yeah. want, but uh, because it's hard for me to finish the move. But and yeah. I think uh, this is uh, uh, what I need to work much more. Um, talk to me about when COVID happened and how you reacted to it and, and what happened to your training and preparation. Uh, we were in, uh, in Italy in that period and mm. uh, it was really difficult. Um, we came back at, uh, in Romania. We stayed uh, in our training camp uh, like one or uh, two months. I don't remember exactly. Uh, we made our trainings uh, and after that uh, we went home because uh, uh, this was uh, the um, rule in that uh, period to go home. Everybody mm. needed to stay home and uh, we trained uh, on the ergometer every day. Uh, we didn't know in that moment if uh, we are going to compete on a competition or not, but we still remained the uh, with uh, the mind that uh, at the end of the year maybe we are going to compete and because of that we didn't stop our trainings and uh, I remember that uh, I was erging and uh, I was live streaming with my coach <laughs> <laughs> he, he was looking at me and uh, um, he was um, uh, talking to me about my technique and I, and I was uh, running and making my trainings at my home. It was difficult, but after that period, when we came back to the training camp, we had a 2K uh, test. Yeah. And 90% uh, uh, of uh, the Olympic team uh, made the personal best. So oh, wow. It was... A difficult, a tough period, but uh, at the end, uh, it was really good for us. Mm. And when did you think or uh, decide that your target was to win the Olympics, to win the gold medal? At what at what point did that become a goal for you or a possibility? After the um, World Championship from. Uh, 2019. Oh, really? That's so. Uh... Yeah, really. Because uh... after we finished, uh, I was thinking that I uh, won the silver and uh, the New Zealand beat us with uh, one second and a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I made a promise to myself and I uh, said that uh, at the next competition, I uh, will beat New Zealand in, with uh, one second and much more. Wow. And, uh, and with this mindset, I uh, started the new year and we took it the gold at the Europeans and at the World Championship. And uh, after that, everything came uh, naturally. <laughs> mm. How was your Olympic experience? How was being in the village and, and training and competing? What do you remember about Tokyo? I, I remember everything. It was so special <sighs> and so different from any other competition. It's a, a different world. It's uh, beautiful to stay in the same place with all the, the athletes of the world, the best ones, to eat together, to go together on the trainings and uh, to compete in such a great competition. Uh, I, uh, I uh, still have uh, in my mind and uh, in my soul that, that feeling of uh, uh, gratitude and uh, happiness. I think uh, that uh, for me, uh, the Olympic Games from Paris will be greater that, than Tokyo because mm -hmm. uh, at Tokyo was the COVID and uh, because of that uh, was a little bit strange. But uh, at Paris, uh, I think uh, will be much, uh, much beautiful and uh, much yeah, more interesting. Yeah. yeah. How? But, uh, 
I think we are not going to stay in the Olympic Village at, uh, this at Paris. Really? Quality. Yeah, yeah, because the training camp is too um, the dist distance uh, from the training camp uh, and the mm. Olympic Village is too big for us. And uh, I think we are going to stay in another place. But uh, I don't know exactly the. Um, this kind of information for sure um, but we'll see and will you go to stay in the village for the second week is that possible i hope so i hope so because i really want to go there yeah um how nervous were you for that olympic final in tokyo <laughs> oh i was a lot uh, a lot you know um Everybody from Romania uh, was uh, writing us in that moment, and uh, they was they was expecting the goal for us. Everybody, and uh, um, it's a pressure, a big one, because uh, we didn't want to um, disappoint them, and <laughs> in in that uh, moment we just. Um, turn off our phones because we didn't want to see uh, these messages and uh, mm -hmm. we wanted to stay focused on the competition only. And uh, in the final day, we went to the start and because of that pressure, uh, the boat wasn't working so good. And uh, uh, it was strange, it was uh, difficult, but the green light, uh, changed everything and oh, really? <laughs> yeah from that moment all the pressure just went I don't know where <laughs> and uh, everything was so good and like perfect I can say and uh, I uh, raced it with the mind of uh, 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 I wanted to win because my family was watching me and I was thinking I, I'm doing this for my family and for my for the people who was watching me right now and uh, I don't want to disappoint them and I'm, I don't want to disappoint myself and uh, that was a good race and uh, I am pleased yeah. with it. Uh, there were no spectators there for your medal ceremony or to watch you racing but how was it to receive an Olympic gold medal? It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was so special. Uh, in in that moment, I wasn't realizing what's happening. I mean, I, I was uh, taking the gold medal in my hands and uh, I was not realizing what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, even after some days, I was thinking that maybe this was a dream or something is it true i had the gold <laughs> it was so strange but it's a such a different experience and such a mm -hmm. special one mm -hmm. so um thinking now about um some of the the training that you do or you're looking forward to in in the next um few months um do you have a favorite training session that you like most and the training session that you don't like, that you hate? I don't really like this period of winter. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's cold and we stay only in the single school and uh, it's hard to make training every day in the same boat alone. It's easier when you, when you have some somebody with you. And uh, yeah. I don't like this period so much and my favorite period is um, uh, when the first competition came in that period because uh, uh, I feel the energy and uh, everything so cool mm. and uh, we can't wait to compete and see how the things goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things around the Romanian team is that uh, people notice is the the high rate of um of the crew the high rate of striking is that something you train for or does that just happen 
it came naturally because we are uh, we are searching for elasticity and uh, for efficiency we are not looking to put all the power because uh, this is not uh, for us we are uh, athletes who make the boat go faster only with efficiency and the rate is uh, bigger because of that mm. yeah um how did you look on uh, if you take a look at the results of the romanian team at this year's world championships um, how happy were the team with the results some of some of the guys got medals some didn't get medals but uh, what what was the the mood in the team like um this was a great result for romania because uh our goals wasn't the medals this year, was only the qualifications. And um, we qualified everything we wanted. And uh, in the next year, we don't have the pressure of the qualification anymore. We just train and uh, um, searching for the best combination of the boats. And uh, for sure, at the next competitions you'll see the difference because uh, the guys our boys uh, was uh, doubling up so it was hard for them to take medals but uh, for sure uh, in the future they will compete uh, in um, only in one boat and uh, the results will come mm. and and what about you in the olympics um do you think you will only be in one boat in Paris or is there a chance you might be in more than one boat, maybe? <laughs> After I uh, spoke with Antonio, he told me that I will uh, double up. And that's what I want. I really want to um, race in the double and uh, in the eight. Uh, but uh, for the moment, it's important to make my trainings, to be healthy and yeah. for sure you will see me in the boat of them. So when when you train, so I know you, you are in the single now for the next few months, but then you will get into the double with Ancucha. But how many times will you sit in an eight with just one blade? In How many training sessions will you do in an eight? Not many. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, but for sure not many because uh, everybody will train in the small boats and uh, eight is just uh, the second one. So uh, maybe one month <laughs> before the Olympics, yeah, yeah. but not yeah. all the month, just some trainings in that month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And and you're only, you're, you're still only young. So... Um... I, I'm guessing that you might think, okay, once Paris is done, maybe I will think about my future and maybe that future might be Los Angeles. Maybe. I'm thinking now only at Paris. Yes, uh, yes. This is the big goal for me after Paris. Probably I will continue and I will start to think about Los Angeles because as you say, said I'm young and uh, I have uh, all I need to continue. So why not? Um, and uh, so one, one thing, you were, you were entered in the single skull in the Europeans this year. Uh, but I wonder if you have any ambition to be a single sculler or to try your speed as a single sculler on the world, on the world stage. One day, I think I will try this thing because I really think I can make it. Uh, I don't know exactly when, but in the future, I really think I will go in the single. Uh -huh. I, I would be excited to see that. What do you think of the single scholars now when you see the women's single skull? My favorite is Caroline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really like how she schools and she's a great athlete. And uh, I really think at her like uh, at a friend 
we raced together uh, at Basel in uh, uh, um, yeah and yeah. Uh, we know each other and uh, she's so great like an athlete and like a normal per person too yeah yeah she's a lovely lady definitely she she really is um and are there any other crews that you look at and you watch and you think are oh, they really good or you're friends with uh, uh, other people who who are the, who are the other crews or the other people that you are friends with I'm always looking for the girls uh, of um, Netherlands from the double school which uh, in this moment uh, went to the quadruple school yeah yeah and um uh, I uh, also uh, um, look to the girls from uh, the um, four, the Netherlands, uh, yeah. this country, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the Lithuania from the double. These girls, girls are so strong. Um, I, I'm looking uh, after everybody, and, and uh, I try to see if uh, they look better and. Or uh, maybe not so good uh, all the time uh, on every competition I saw them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and what, do you watch any of the men's rowing and any of the the the, the guys that row? Do you um, do you know them or do you watch the crews and think, oh, they look really good? Uh, I'm uh, looking, yeah, uh, maybe the double from the Netherlands and the four of uh, GB, yeah. Mm. Um, the single schools from Germany, Oli. Oli, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. looking, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, so... Uh, I know you had the chance to see uh, your family uh, because it was the, the holidays now. Um, but how how is it living so far away from home? Does that is that very difficult for you, or have you got now lots of friends where where you are on, on in your apartment? I have a lot lot of friends here. Uh, it's difficult uh, in some periods when. Um, uh, I'm uh, so far away because I start to miss them, and uh, I'd like to see them to see them uh, often, but uh, it's not possible. Uh, I think I'll go home again uh, uh, on Christmas, maybe, yeah. and yeah. Uh, when I have uh, bad periods. I'm thinking about them more, and uh, that's when I start to miss them a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, I can understand that. Um, so uh, what, do you have any interest? Do you have a time for anything outside of rowing? Uh, I like to read, to spend my uh, time reading uh, or painting. Oh, really? Um, oh, what yeah. do you paint? Uh, flowers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Depends. Uh, on the day and it yeah. uh, depends on my mood <laughs> and do you and paint I, in ac acrylics or oil color what do you or watercolors acrylics. what do you use ah acrylics. yeah 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 it's a good way of spending time <laughs> it's relaxing yeah yeah definitely um and um can we do you ever post any of your paintings on instagram Mm, I don't think so, or maybe I don't remember. There is possibly there is a possibility mm. to have one post yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that would be really nice. Um, and do do you have uh, a, a a favorite race, your best ever race that you look you look at, and you think in that race that was the time where I was at my absolute best? Mm, I don't have one because ah. I think like this about every race. I ah. think, yeah, yeah, because I give 
all my best every time in every race and uh, I can uh, always I don't have any race in which uh, uh, I didn't give all I have so yeah I know on the, um, the the podcast called the Row Show, um, the guys Lawrence Britton and Jake Green they ask um, their guests about the race that they have looked at most on video. That they've watched back again, any race. So, which race have mm. you spent? Have you watched more times than any other? Uh, I think the race from the World Championship uh, from 2022. Ah. That race. And the second one is that from the Olympics. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really good. Um, so, um, Simona, we've been talking for nearly an hour now, and uh, it, it, it's been fantastic to have your company and and to understand about your rowing philosophy and and your amazing attitude to training um do you have any more ambitions outside of rowing that you would like to fulfill in your life i think i have uh, uh, all are uh, already so uh, mm. i'm so grateful for my life and for what i have right now i'm just trying to live in the present and uh, all the things uh, are just uh, coming at the right moment. Yeah, I can see why you're such a, a fantastic athlete. Um, so the the very best for this time of the season, and I hope Thank you I so will much. send you some good energy to help you <laughs> on all those cold days when you have to be in the single. <laughs> oh yeah, and, thank you. <laughs> And I, I'm sure the warmth will come back soon. But uh, we'll end the live part of this interview now. So, Simona Radis, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.